Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I have a different kind of project. I will be showing you how to make an album using one 8x8 pattern paper. Almost without waste, I will be using pretty much the whole pad. I'm definitely not an expert in album making, but this is such a fun project and I wanted to share it with you. And uh, trust me, if I can make an album, so can you. I made this into an album, but you can definitely recreate it into a journal. Uh, you will find that there are pages with pockets, there are pages where they fit 4x3 uh, photos. There are acetate papers, there are vellum papers, lots of pattern papers, and this is a really fun project. For this, I will be using only one 8x8 paper pad. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about each and every one of those pages what I did for decoration up to now. But first, let me show you how I did the whole construction. So I will be using all the papers from this 8x8 paper pad. This is my Olala collection with Stamperia. But if you follow the steps, you can recreate this album by using any 8x8 paper pad that you have on hand. Now, if you notice, all the pages have an A side and a B side. Just decide what you want to use for decorating your pages and what you want to use for making the actual pages. So here I'm going to leave this one aside so that I can use it for decoration. This is another page that I need to cut out elements from. Here is one more with many uh, quotes as well as this one with all the postcard cards. I'm going to leave those four papers aside and these are going to be used later on for decoration reasons on top of my pages. Now let me separate the rest of the pages and uh, this is where you get to decide which side you want to use from each one of the pages. In my case, for an album, just because I don't like it to be super busy, I'm going with the B side, so where you see all those patterns that uh, they are more like a background pattern. However, you can definitely go ahead and use the front side if you like. Now the front cover, I'm keeping it aside because I need to fuzzy cut all those uh, flowers later on to use for the embellishments. Then I'm going to take my pattern papers and I'm going to score them at half, so at 4 inches. And then all you need to do is to just fold them. This is going to allow you to have a pocket either at the top or on the side of each one of those pages. Plus the pages are going to be nice and sturdy because they are doubled up. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for all the rest of the pages. And once you decide which side of each page you are going to use, don't look at the back because then you will start having doubts about which side to use and you will never pretty much finish the project. Now also you need to save one of those pages for your front cover. This is the one that I will be keeping aside for the, for the cover of my album. So just save this one and I'll show you how you can be frugal and cover the whole album, although it is way bigger than the 8x8. So here's another one that I'm saving on the side. And I have all these pages for my album. Now I'm going to show you how you can uh, make the most out of them. One way is to just look at the back and see if you can use something to create a pocket at the top or at the bottom. So here, for example, I have this top banner, which uh, I can fold at the back. I'm going to score at two inches, which is going to give me a finished page of six by four with a pocket at the bottom. And you can repeat the same idea as many times as you like, depending on what's at the back. In any case, even if uh, there isn't something at the back that I can use to fold, I can always just trim with my paper uh, trimmer the page to be 4 by 6. And I'm not going to uh, throw away this scrap. This is a 2 inch scrap, which I can definitely use to fuzzy cut images and use it to decorate my album. So from this one, for example, I'm going to cut out the window and you will see how I use all the bits and pieces. From this one, for example, you can save the stack of macaroons. And then it's just a matter of deciding which way you want the pocket to be. I'm just using a circle punch so that I can uh, have an indication of where the pocket is, if there is a pocket. 
And this is how this page would look if I use the decorative side, the A side. However, again, I'm going for the B sides for this album since I am planning to stick photos on top and I don't uh, want to keep the background pages too busy. But it is totally an option, depends on what you are going for and uh, you can definitely mix and match. For example, you can make your album double the pages and you can use two pads so you can use both sides. I will repeat the same process for the rest of the pages, randomly deciding where I'm going to add a pocket, either on the side or on the top. And again, with my double-sided tape, I'm going to stick the rest of the sides together. Now, this um, is where you can definitely use uh, glue if you like. I just have tons of this roll tape and I just want to use it. So for the one with the map, I'm going for a top pocket. Again, I'm going to stick together the two sides. And then I'm going to show you a way that uh, you can put together some of those pages where you have the pockets at the bottom. So here are the three pages that I have put together up to now. And now this is one of the pages that I'm talking about where I have flipped the bottom to create the pockets. Now you can either put it together like that. You can have a pocket in between if you like, just like I did previously. Or if you want, you can even use your scissors, cut out a slit at the center, which is going to allow for a better uh, folding of your page. I'm going to show you what I mean like that. And then you can stick everything down. You can even use your scissors and cut out this pocket on an angle and stick uh, this pocket only on the outside side. This is going to give that look of a folio if uh, you like. And another thing that you can do is to just use your scissors and fuzzy cut around one of the images from the flap from this pocket, like I'm doing here, which can be used as a tab where, or like a pocket where you can uh, tag things behind. So here I'm just going uh, to go all around that lovely uh, label as well as the flowers. Now these flaps are usually completely random on what you can get by flipping the back of the page towards the front and uh, sometimes you get those happy accidents where like here for example you get a beautiful design that you can use it to the max. And of course you can always change your mind. Here for example I completely changed my mind for the other pocket so I'm going to uh, chop it off. And uh, this is where I'm going to use a little bit of glue to stick this tab down just on one side so it works like a pocket. And on top I can add photos, ephemeras and whatever else. And if you want to make the pages of your album more interesting, you can interchange different types of uh, pages. So here, for example, I'm cutting out a few pages out of uh, acetate. Again, these are 4 by 6 You can even uh, uh, use an envelope as a page. I'm going to use vellum, for example, also. If you also want to get that uh, junk journal look, you don't have to have all your pages at the same size. Switching the sizes between the pages always gives a fun look. And to make my album fuller, I'm also going to use some plain cardstock. You can see this is a cream colored page, so it matches better with the colors of my uh, collection. You definitely go with white or any other pink color, for example. Now, this is a great way to make it fuller without using too much pattern paper. You can interchange these um, uh, pages in between uh, the designed pattern paper. And of course, with this solid cardstock, you can definitely create flaps, interactive pages, whatever uh, floats your boat. So here, for example, I have one here. I don't really measure. I just make sure that when I fold it, it's going to give me a 4 by 6 So here are all the pages I have up to now. The pattern papers, the acetate, the vellum, as well as the solid cardstock. Now, there are many ways to put together an album, however, I always go the easy way. I like to use the cinch. Sometimes I use the circle one for the spiral. Other times I use the other punch that gives you the disc binding uh, system. For this, today I'm going with the spiral one. 
So first I'm going to do all the punching on one side of the pages and you can definitely add way more than just one. However, I usually go one by one just to make sure that I punch the right way. Especially with the pattern paper, you need to make sure on which way you want to bind that page. Now, if you want to know the exact measurements, I did use that stopper for the first punching on uh, the um, position E. And now I'm just uh, going to lock down the pages on the third hole. And I will repeat for all the pages. And of course, this is where you can add as many new pages as you like. Here, for example, I created some from solid pink cardstock. Decide the way you want your pages to be binded. So I'm just going to mix all those different pages so that I don't have uh, two pattern papers next to each other or all pink pages together. And you can definitely be more organized than me if you uh, have a plan on your mind on where you want your vellum to fall or how you can divide different areas of your album using the acetate pages. I just go completely random. I also used the solid cream cardstock to create a page for the last one. This has a little pocket where I can tuck inside any leftover scraps that I have from the pattern paper. I'm not going to throw anything away. These scraps at the back pocket can always be useful when you want to embellish a page later on when you are actually sticking uh, photos on your album. Now I'm going to count 10 holes and I'm going to cut out my spiral. And now for the mini scenes, you need to keep in mind that it doesn't work with any type of spiral. So you need to use a spiral that's uh, 5 eighths of an inch or smaller. However, here I'm using a 1 inch spiral, so you see it doesn't fit there. That's not a problem for me, I just wanted to have more space for my little book. And I'm just going to pinch them together with my hands. And my little album is ready. You can definitely stop here, especially if you use hard covers for the front and the back. However, I'm going to create a cover for it with ribbon and everything to make it even cuter. At the end, I'm going to show you how I decorated most of those pages. But uh, for now, let's put together the cover. Really simple to do. Again, I'm not an expert, but trust me, if I can do it, you can do it as well. So I need to create the front cover and the back cover. I need to allow for the spiral as well as about quarter of an inch all around the book. So front and back covers are six and a half by five and one quarter. And the spine is one and a half by six and a half. Now, remember this pattern paper that we left aside so we can use it to cover up the album. Of course, it is very small to cover up completely all this uh, real estate. However, I'm going to show you a really easy technique to do that, especially when you are frugal with pattern paper, just cut it in half. And we are going to use those two halves to cover up the front and the back page. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to cover up completely the um, cardboard with glue. Place your half page on top and cover up as much as you can. Don't stick it flush on the edges so you can wrap it around. Now I'm using my binding tools which make uh, life easy. And I find these are really handy for non-expert album makers like myself. Then on the flaps you can definitely use double-sided tape or even better some glue. And then wrap it around. Just make sure to do a neat job on the corners. But of course this is an issue only if you don't uh, uh, plan to use those uh, little metallic covers uh, on the corners that I will be using later on. You'll see what I mean. If you do use those corners, don't worry too much about doing a super neat uh, work on uh, those corners. Anyway, I am going to repeat the same process for the other tab. And then of course you see that uh, my uh, pattern paper doesn't cover up completely the whole thing but that's not an issue we all have solid cardstock that we can use if uh, your pattern paper is not enough just use solid cardstock that matches the colors of the pattern paper so again here i like to apply my glue with a white brush 
And uh, then again, I'm using my book binding uh, tools, which are really handy. And even if you don't have these tools, just make sure that you leave enough space between all those cardboards so that uh, your album can easily open and close. So the cover is pretty much ready. I'm just using my bone folder to make sure that I have a good contact. Also use your bone folder to reinforce those scoring lines. And uh, I'm going to show you how it looks. Absolutely adorable, although we didn't use one cardstock all over the outside cover. Now, one thing that I like to do when I have two papers that meet with each other is to use a very thin strip of uh, specialty paper. So this is uh, a kind of glossy, but also in that uh, pale pink color that matches perfectly with the colors of my album. I'm cutting out a couple of thin strips and I'm just going to stick them along this uh, line where those two papers meet. This is going to make sure that in case I had something misaligned, it's going to be covered up and at the same time I'm adding a touch of shine. At this stage you can always use a T-ruler to make sure that this is completely straight and then just wrap it around at the back. And of course, I will repeat the same thing for the back cover. Now, this is the time to do some holes. I'm going to add a little hole on the spine where I can always use that to hang little charms for my album. I'm not going to do that for this video, but uh, make sure that you add a hole there. It's always handy. And then I am going to uh, punch a couple of holes on the front and at the back of my covers so that I can use a ribbon through those holes and keep my cover closed. I use those wide eyelets for the holes in a pink gold color, but for the spine I'm not going to use it just yet. So let's attach the ribbon now that is going to keep the whole album closed. Now for that I'm going to use two pieces of lace. I find that the lace was a great uh, choice for uh, the vibe of this album, very romantic. So I'm going to thread through the lace and then uh, cut out as much as I need. I'm going to repeat the same process for the other side. And then of course I'm going to stick it down either with glue or with double sided tape. And of course repeat the same process for the other side. Now of course we need to cover up the whole mess. I did apply my glue and I'm using a piece of uh, uh, pink cardstock that I used for the cover as well as for some of the pages. And you will see that my pink cardstock isn't wide enough, but that's not a problem. I'm going to cover up what's left with the spiral album that we made at the beginning. So I'm using strong glue at the back of the last page and then I'm going to stick it down. Align it with the back cover and make sure that everything fits nicely. Now it's time to punch again that hole on the spine, apply that um, eyelet, and then I'm going to grab a little chain which I'm going to thread through the hole, and this way I will have a way to attach charms later on. Now one little detail, when I like to attach metallic uh, uh, decorations on an album, I always make sure that they all match together. So here, for example, I use only rose gold, but you can definitely go only with silver or with gold or whatever colors there are available. Finishing touch, I'm going to attach those corners. Again, completely optional, but they really add that touch of elegance on an album. It makes them... Uh, all these metallic elements makes it kind of uh, look uh, more finished and professional. So this is the basic construction and how the album looks at this stage. However, I still have enough uh, papers that I can fuzzy cut elements to decorate some of the pages. And uh, these are the papers that I still have. So the cut apart page of the album, many, many images to play with from here. Lots of quotes and labels from this one, flower arrangements from this page, postcards from this one, absolutely love those, and lastly, many quotes to use. So by using all those leftover papers, I'm going to show you what I came up with.
I kept the front cover very simple, just with a label, and inside the label this is one of the quotes that I cut out from the pattern paper. I still have to add some charms here, but let's open it up so you can see the inside. So first of all, on the first cover you will find a waterfall. Cascading photos can be stuck down on the pink flap and then on the postcards you can write down some notes about the photo. And let's take a look at the actual uh, album. A first page is made out of acetate and I just stuck down a couple of quotes front and back so you cannot see the glue in between. You will find many pockets, you can find uh, uh, photo mats that are mainly 3 by 4 and everything I used come from the same pad. As I promised in the beginning, I didn't use any other embellishments. I haven't finished yet decorating all the pages, but you can see how it looks at this stage. And again, as I said in the beginning, although I'm not an expert in album making, it is such a fun project to make. It allows you to use a whole pad of 8x8, especially if you are a hoarder of pattern paper and you want to use it somehow, just use this technique and you will end up with adorable albums. Depending on the images and the theme of every 8x8 pattern paper, you will end up with a completely different look. If you get inspired from this video and actually create an album, make sure to tag me if you post the result online, I would absolutely love to see what you create. It's a fun album that was super easy to put together and here is the last page where I can add all the extra bits and pieces that I still have on hand. Uh, this is the leftover that I haven't used yet, which of course I'm going to save. I'm just going to place everything on the last pocket. So as I work on this album, I can always have some handy elements to decorate it with when I stick the photos on top. So I think that I only have uh, these three leftovers of flowers and I used pretty much everything from this album. So that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time.